Welcome to another episode of Ask the Expert on Fox 4. I'm your host, Tana Guthrie, and today we're going to talk about your roof. Remember when you got hit by the hailstorm and you had all those people come by and they could do it really cheap and they didn't really do the job right, the fly-by-night roofer is, well, I got a guy who's not a fly-by-night. He is a roof expert, Robert Jordan with RJ Construction. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Good afternoon. So how do you know if you've got a good roof or a bad one? Because there are a lot of bad ones. They don't finish the job. Um, that's a great question. So there's many different ways you can determine if you have a good roof or a bad roof. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's kind of open-ended. First off, if your roof's leaking, you probably got a problem. Okay. <laughs> um, that's a short and the narrow. If your roof is old, has signs of staining on it, age, you're missing some shingles, um, just general problems, it's, it's time to get that looked at. But is that a bad roof? But I'm talking about the guys who, who come through. It's typically after a hailstorm, and they just do a sloppy job or they rip people off. You know. Yeah, so the bad the bad roofer, the chucks in the truck, as we call them. What do you call them? Chucks in a truck. Okay. <laughs> um, they show up for the hailstorm. Yeah. Um, they work for three or four months, and then they're gone. Um, so usually you can tell you've got a bad roof is it's going to leak relatively quickly after they put those roofs on um, because they're using day laborers. Um, they're buying the cheapest materials they possibly can, and they're just trying to get it done and go. Well, so how do you find a good roofer? What do you look for? So there's a couple different ways to do that um, here in Kansas City. The main one that makes I think makes it super easy is Johnson County requires if you pull a permit in that city or that county that you have to pass their Johnson County test. Well, the Johnson County test is white labeled as the ICC test, which is the inner, um, not the inner. It's the uh, yeah, it's the inner construction code. Um, International Construction Code, and it's their roofing section of their test that they require their roofers to take before they can pull a permit. You have to re-up it every year. You have to continue to do continuing education. You have to have insurance. You have to have workers' comp. Your crew has to carry the same types of insurances. Also, the state of Kansas requires a registration piece. So you have to register with the state of Kansas in order to pull a permit inside the state of Kansas to do a roof. And every year you have to renew. And you have to make sure your taxes are filed. You have to make sure that all your paperwork's above board. There's no issues. And so that gives a really nice layer of protection, whether you live on the Kansas side or the Missouri side. Because if you're dealing with a roofer here in Kansas City and they've got both of those boxes checked, then you're going to be in good shape because that carries over to them wanting to do business in Missouri as well. Now, are you looking online or are you asking the roofer to show you something? So you can go to our website at www.rj-construction.com. We have a link at the bottom right-hand corner to our page to Johnson County and to the state of Kansas where you can go in and check that registration. Oh, okay. And our registration number is on all of our business cards. They're on all of our trucks. Um, it's on our websites. It's on all of our marketing material that we use. So let's talk a little bit about hail. I mean, if your roof needs replaced, you're praying for a hailstorm so insurance will take care of it. So what happens when you do get a hailstorm? Do you call the insurance company first or call the roofer first? So I always encourage customer to call the roofer first. Um, the insurance companies get bogged down. Um, and the agents don't like you to file claims if it's not necessary. So what I tell our customers is, is call us out first. If we come out there and look at it and there's no damage to the roof, we don't want to waste our time trying to file an erroneous claim or do something silly. Instead, we're just going to tell you, hey, the roof's fine. you got nothing to worry about. Let's all move on. But if the roof has damage and there's problems that we see as a licensed professional, we're going to share those pictures with you, talk to you about the process, and then start, mm -hmm. start helping you through that claim process. So what's your take on wood shingles? I don't like them. No. Neither um, do the fire departments. <laughs> no, the fire departments don't. So they're really pretty when they get installed. Um, and it's if you, it goes back hundreds of years. It's one of the very first roofs that were ever invented um, that they were putting on houses in the 1800s. Uh, the problem is, is that we find a lot of wood shakes that have been overlaid with some other type of roofing product. The fire department does not like that because in the event of a fire and you're standing on that, it's going to fall through. Um, most states and municipalities do not recognize wood shakes as a nailable substrate anymore, so we can no longer put shingles on top of wood shakes. The wood shakes have to come off, and we've got to do a redeck. But you do see a lot of that, the two layers. I mean, maybe that was just grandfathered in. So two layers is an is an approved method of repair in most circumstances. The problem with putting two layers on your roof is you're only trying to save a small amount of money from the tear-off, which a tear-off of a complete tear-off on a roof is, is so much better because you can identify bad decking, you can identify your flashings, you can identify your valley metals, you can make sure all your penetrations are properly flashed. All that stuff gets handled when you tear the roof off. When you do a layover, you can't visualize any of that, and you just put shingles on top of it and you go. The other problem with that is, is when you do do a layover, 
it is going to shorten the lifespan of that shingle. So that shingle is going to probably be reduced by about half the time because it can't breathe, the moisture can't escape out of it, and the additional weight to your home, it just causes problems and deteriorates faster. Yeah, I wondered about that, the weight on the ceiling joists mm-hmm. or the, the joists in the attic. Correct. Looks like that put pressure on those. That's correct. So we, we try to avoid that. And, and, and it's funny, we find houses with six and seven layers of shingles oh, wow. with a wood shake underneath it. <laughs> That's fun, fun to rip off, isn't it? It is. And I'll give you a really quick fun story. We had this really nice old couple and we went and pulled off seven or eight layers of shingles and their wood shake. And they were inside their home and none of the doors or windows would open after we took the roof off because of all the weight from the house was relieved and all the doors got stuck. Oh, so, so what'd they, they do? We had to bring the fire department to come get them out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about tile roofs, because some of them are so pretty. The barrel tile, do you do those as well? Absolutely. So tile roofs are probably my favorite roof. Why is that? Um, I think they're pretty. Um, the history that comes back to those, especially when you talk about Ludoisi tile, um, goes back decades and decades of generations. And if you look at the homes that are over in Europe that have tile, that have slate, they've been there for four and 500 years, and they last an incredibly long time. But that would put you out of business, so if everybody had a Slater tile. No, roof. not at all, because no? new, the new construction would, would demand that from ah, us. Ah, true. Um, and, and those roofs do require some maintenance. We've had we've had some real pleasure to do some work on some customers' homes in Mission Hills. Um, we've got an incredible project we're fixing to start in Lakewood. Um, it is a Ludoisi clay tile that's never been installed anywhere in the United States, um, with the exception of Maui. And they ship it to exotic places all over the world, and they're bringing it here. We're going to install it here. Um, and we're, we're really, really excited about it. So within the next couple of weeks, we'll have that roof on there in Lakewood. Will you post it on your website? I'd love to see it. Yes, yes. We have we have before drone footage, and we have after drone footage that we'll use when we're done. And during the process, it's it's a pretty neat project. The folks from Ludoisi are all coming from Ohio to come watch us put it on. So what is Ludoisi? Just a brand name of the tile? So Ludoisi is um, an Italian tile, clay tile company. And the barrel tile that you mentioned comes from hand making tiles and they would lay them over your thighs is why oh, they have and the, that's why it curved that's why it has the curve to it and they put them in the kiln and they cook them um ludoisi moved to america from italy in the early 1900s late 1800s i believe went to chicago first um and then uh, they moved to ohio after that um they make probably some of the most incredible beautiful just elegant tile that you're going to find anywhere it's on a lot of different buildings across the world um and and you start you, the the New York Life Building has it on there, the Federal Mint has it on there. I mean, there's all kinds of buildings that has Ludoisi tile on it. The one in Lakewood, what colors are they going to be? Are you, I assume be, it comes it, in different colors, right? It's going to be a three color blend. It's going to be this turquoise color. Oh, um, the customer has a turquoise front door. Okay. And so <laughs> um, the first thing I said was, I've got the roof that'll match your front door, and he was all in. And so I had some pictures that I had taken from the International Roofing Expo that I used to show him, and Mm -hmm. that's what we based the product off of. And we actually ordered the roof. I ordered the wrong color to begin with because I thought it was Mediterranean blue, and turns out, no, it's a three-color custom blend. I bet it looks good, though. It's going to look absolutely fantastic. So those roofs are probably a little bit more expensive than what most of us have. So I'm sure you do just a simple composition roof. Yes. So not only do we do high-end roofs, um, we've got a roof to fit all budgets. So um, we have customers that have 15, 16 squares, which is a very, very small, small house. Um, We we do big commercial roofs that are as big as a million squares. So um, we don't discriminate. Um, if you've got a roof and you need a roof, we'll be more than happy to put one on for you. What about the lifetime warranties? Because I go, it's lifetime or a 50-year warranty, and 20 years later, that roof is shot. Is there such a thing as a lifetime warranty? There is a lifetime warranty. And this is one of my favorite, favorite questions. And I talk about this all the time, sitting at kitchen tables with homeowners and customers having this exact conversation. So uh, to really kind of dial that in, GAF came out with what they called their lifetime product in 2010. And before then, everybody called them 30-year, 40-year, 50-year shingles. And so what GAF said is, we're no longer going to call anything a 30, 40-year, 50-year shingle. We're going to call it a lifetime shingle. And they give a guaranteed lifetime warranty to that shingle. So what does lifetime mean? Lifetime means as long as you own the home. And then every manufacturer is different in how they establish what lifetime means. So GAF says that in the first 10 years, We will cover the labor and the shingles only in their lifetime warranty. They don't cover the nails, the drip edge, the dump fees, or anything of that nature. So you get about 50% of your roof covered if you went and bought shingles at Home Depot and had your roof installed. Now, if you go back, 
And after the 10th year and you file a claim, the material becomes prorated and there is no labor warranty associated with it. Oh, so they depreciate it. They depreciate it. Exactly right. Now, when you do business with us, um, we are a master elite contractor with GAF. And so we have the ability to give you a 50-year bumper-to-bumper warranty, non-prorated, all the bells and the whistles covered, and a 25-year labor warranty. So from the first 25 years that we put that roof on, if something happens to that roof, barring hail, you're covered. Let's just hypothetically say something happens and we go out of business tomorrow. Well, that roof is covered by GAF, not through RJ Construction. And when you're doing business with GAF, you're doing business with the largest shingle manufacturer in North America. And to top that off, the Good Housekeeping Seal has also done a reinsure on top of GAF's warranty to stand behind their product if something were to ever happen to GAF. Now, I was looking at your website, and it says that you are a GAF Triple Excellent Award Excellence Award winner. That's correct. Kansas so, City's own Triple Excellence Award winner. What does that mean then? So GAF identifies their master elite contractors, which there's only three percent of all contractors in the country meet GAF's master elite status. And so you have to do certain criteria just to keep your status. And then we've gone above and beyond and met the requirements. So there's the, the triple excellence stands for three things. One is continuing education. Number two is the grading of our install. So they randomly select 15 of our jobs and they come out and they do a random install to make sure that we've installed that shingle correctly. Um, we got 15 perfect tens last year. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we did over a hundred hours of continuing education training. And the third thing is customer satisfaction surveys. So our customer satisfaction surveys came back with, uh, we had 10 perfect 10 reviews that came back on our surveys. And so those are the three things that they meet that, uh, that criteria with for us to achieve that award. Congratulations. That's very cool. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming in. What's your website if people want to find out more? Uh, our website is www.rj-construction.com. All right. Well, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Join us next time for another episode of Ask the Expert on Fox 4.